On October the 13th, 1924, the Better Farming Train painted a rich orange steamed out of Melbourne for Gippsland. It made a striking picture against the soft green backdrop of a springtime landscape. The train, which was the brainchild of Dr. Cameron, Director of Agriculture, and Harold W. Clapp, Chairman of Victorian Railways Commissioners, was made up of 15 specially fitted out carriages and vans from which lectures and demonstrations of stock and new agricultural techniques could be given to farmers. Although strong criticisms of the usefulness of the project were made in both city and country, Dr. Cameron and Mr. Clapp held deep convictions that the enterprise would work. Through their determination and vision, the Better Farming Train began on that October morning in 1924. It was the first of 38 tours throughout the state over a period of 10 years. On its first tour, the Agricultural College on Wheels went to 12 central Gippsland centres. At Bairnsdale, 2,500 people turned out to see the train, and in all, over 13,000 were to visit the train on that first tour. The following month, the Better Farming train went to South Gippsland. The theme of lectures to dairy farmers in those days, prices of the end product lagging behind production costs, still has a familiar ring. Farmers were advised that the only permanent solution to their problem was to raise production per cow, per acre, per man. They were urged to breed from cows with a good record of butterfat production and to send the scrub bull to the butcher at once. The better farming train was to go on from success to success, making appearances throughout the whole state. The train first visited the Western District in December 1924, the Goulburn Valley in March 1925, the Swan Hill Line in May, and the Northeastern District in August the same year. The Wimmera and Mallee farmers first saw the train in March 1926, and Mildura and Murrayville people in the following August. In October 1929, the train went as far as Gladstone, 133 miles north of Adelaide in South Australia. In all, the Better Farming train was welcomed by 244,000 country folk. There was always something for the ladies, even if domestic science instructor Miss Coxon had to demonstrate on a wood fire stove in a closed car and under the unblinking stare of a patch of Wallach sun.
hundreds of babies were examined and treated by the principal of the Victorian Baby Health Centre's Sister Peck. Sister Peck later remarked upon the instinctive generosity of the farm woman in that, as a rule, her infants were suffering from gross overfeeding. Lectures on stock diseases such as foot rot and mastitis were always well attended. Matters of public and animal health range from the use of Coolgardie safes in the home and dairy to instruction in general farm hygiene. A real old style bush picnic. No portable gas barbecues here. Commenting on the train's first year of operations, Dr. Cameron, Director of Agriculture, said, the interest aroused by contact with the train gives promise of a wonderful change in the attitude of farmers to scientific health. Herd testing associations and better farming leagues have already been established. He went on to say, the popularity of the train has been largely brought about by the perfect cooperation of the two departments concerned and I feel quite sure that the efforts of my own staff would have been comparatively futile had it not been for the very full assistance of the railways. Dr. Cameron, scientist. Harold W. Clapp, man of vision. Their faith in the better farming train had indeed been justified. Farmers, the novelty of the idea, a spectacle, aroused their curiosity. They were eager to see this train. Painted a rich orange, it was a travelling experimental plot. A school of agriculture on wheels with lantern slides. Despite themselves, they became strongly interested in the knowledge that was offered. Many appeared surprised that there was such a thing as a science of agriculture. They were quite unaware that there were ways of learning farm practices other than those passed on by their fathers. Today, the scenes and the fashions have changed. So has farming. Gone are the Clydesdales, the Federation Wheat, the Stripper. Gone, too, a hand milking and the T-model Ford. Silent forever is the protesting scrub roller, the ring of the smith's hammer and the staccato note of the shears. The mullboard and the scoop lie rusted in many a field near where once stood a fence of post and rail. For these are the years of technological achievement in agriculture. On reflection, the Victorian railways are proud to have contributed to that successful enterprise of so long ago when, in partnership with the Department of Agriculture, they arrange for the better farming train to take knowledge throughout the land. <laughs>